Alberta Justice Minister Tyler Shandro is demanding that the federal government fire RCMP Commissioner Brenda Lucky, saying he wants Public Safety Minister Marco Mendicino to rescind her appointment. In a statement, he says, quote, the commissioner of the RCMP must be held to the highest of standards. So far, Minister Mendicino has stood idly by, while Commissioner Lucky has failed to meet even the most meager of standards for the past two years. This is an abrogation of the minister's core responsibility to Canadians and must be rectified before the RCMP's reputation as Canada's federal police service is further damaged. Now, Commissioner Lucky told CBC Prince Edward Island's Compass newscast she's not going anywhere. I'm not going to comment directly on, on that. I, I, I'm not going to step down from my position. Uh, what I will, I was given a very strong mandate. I will keep working towards uh, keeping the confidence of the government and keeping the confidence of Canadians, making sure Canadians are safe. Earlier today, Marco Medicino said he still had confidence in Commissioner Lucky, as did the Prime Minister. We're going to continue to work with uh, the Commissioner on keeping Canadians safe. Yes, we still have Okay, the power panel is back for a, a final round on this. Amanda Alvaro, Robert Benzie, Kathleen Monk, and Tim Powers. So, Kathleen, what do you make of this? Brenda Lucky's on a, having a pretty rough patch lately. Yeah, what do you make of yeah. this move by Alberta? Uh, well, I don't agree with Tyler Shander on much, let's say that. But um, <laughs> uh, I, I think it's interesting, you know, remember, Brenda Lucky serves at the pleasure of the Prime Minister. I'm a yep. political staffer, so I know that. You serve at your, your leader's choice, and when you no longer please your leader, you no longer serve. So while the Prime Minister and Mendicino may say today that they're going to continue to work with her, they'll probably continue to work with her up until about March 2023, when her term is over. I, I think the thing is that... The more that Brenda Lucky vows to claim, stay on her job, the more yep. she struggles with that. It's like watching somebody in quicksand. She's just sinking, you know, and, and she's she's not going to get out of it. We've had so many scandals under her, whether it's the Nova Scotia mass murder uh, scandal, the, the allegations of political interference. Prior to that, the allegations of her refusing to acknowledge the systemic racism that exists in the RCMP. Um, and, and then this latest, uh, you know, scandal in terms of her testimony at the public commission, you know, um, Earlier, Amanda cited her favorite moment from the testimony at the Public Commission. My favorite moment was actually this moment from uh, Jody Thompson, Thomas, the National Security Advisor, who said last week, if the Commissioner of the RCMP had some news to share uh, with the Prime Minister about the threat, she doesn't need an engraved invitation to do so. And so her claim that she didn't speak up and she wasn't called upon to actually express her, her opinion, she, she should have just done so. She wasn't doing her job. So, um, I mean, you've talked to many people on the show who have, who, who have said, last week. They can't believe she's still as commissioner. And I think it's pretty much a guarantee that she won't be extended past March 2023. Amanda, you probably have better insight into the thinking mm -hmm. of, of prominent liberals than, than most people on this panel. Yeah. I mean, what do you think? I mean, they're publicly saying they're going to support her. It feels like until you get the Rouleau report, until you get the Nova Scotia report, you can't make any final determinations. But, but where do you think this goes? Well, I think Kathleen has as much insight as I have because it's exactly <laughs> how I feel about it. I think that it's unfortunate because when the commissioner talks about, you know, the reason I'm going to stay in this job is because I have the confidence of Canadians and I have the confidence of, prime, of the prime minister and of cabinet. And unfortunately, that's the thing that really seems to be called into question is the confidence that anyone has uh, in her job. And it was it was leaked earlier, I think today or yesterday, uh, that from senior government officials who said that the federal cabinet is not confident or is dissatisfied with her approach. Mm. And it doesn't take, you know, it's not, it doesn't take a lot to understand why. And Kathleen named some of those items, whether it's, you know, her really her lack of communication skills or her mishandling of major files. And it's not just the Emergencies Act. It's mm -hmm. the Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia mass shooting. It's the systemic racism uh, within the RCMP, major files that she is at the helm of that mm -hmm. have really gone sideways. And then if you watched her testimony or listened to her testimony on Tuesday, it was a lot of, I don't remember, I don't know, I'm not <laughs> sure of how the Emergencies Act should be used. And none of those words invoke a sense of confidence. So I think that confidence is eroded. I agree with Kathleen. Her term is up in March. And while we're in the middle of 
these hearings and these testimonies does not seem like a good time uh, to fire the commissioner, they will likely roll it out and wait until that renewal comes up. That would be my guess. Yeah, but Tim, this this is happening oh, five, six months out from an Alberta election. And while I'm sure Tyler Shandro is concerned about how well the RCMP is performing, he is trying to build support as government is for an Alberta provincial police, yeah, right? Absolutely. Instead of relying on the RCMP for contract policing. So is there a, a secondary agenda at play here, perhaps? Well, you can go back to Stephen mm. Harper's firewall letter if you want to make that <laughs> argument, right? Uh, yes, I mean, there's always that agenda in Alberta, but everybody talks about building a provincial police force in Alberta until they figure out how much damn money it costs and what it's going to require, <laughs> so they don't. But I think there's a, another political dimension to this. It's probably easier for the government to let her term run out than be seen to fire the first ever female, permanent female right. commissioner of the right. RCMP. Because remember what happened last time they fired a senior justice official, female justice official, that being <laughs> Jody Wilson-Rabel. I'm not saying they're the same disposition and yeah. they may have the same motive, but she is the commissioner of the RCMP. She knows a lot. Um, she should have been gone, I agree with Mike. She should have been gone in the summer when all of that came out about what allegedly happened uh, around uh, the the, uh, the the after the mass shooting in Nova Scotia and Commission Inspector Superintendent Cameron's testimony. Um, the government has had no trouble, to their credit, firing, uh, removing senior officials, all of them male, in DND for allegations and actual behaviors that were heinous mm -hmm. and wrong. Uh, I do think there's a very live political dynamic to letting her stay. March is coming. Let's just hope for the sake of the RCMP, whose morale, I suspect, is significantly impacted by having her there, that nothing drastic and dramatic ha happens over the next number of months, because that's a real concern. The rank and file, I suspect, and I used to work with a bunch of them, aren't um, as comfortable with uh, Commissioner Lucky's leadership as they may have been with her leadership in the beginning. Uh, Rob, uh, the power panel seems to be three for three that she's gone by the end of March, even though the Prime Minister and the Public Safety Minister says uh, they have confidence in Brenda Lucky. I mean, what, what do you think happens? Do you think she is eventually replaced at the end of the fiscal year, as, as everyone else seems to think? Yeah, I think that's where this is headed. But you know what? We should look at the positive, David. And this is actually a good moment for Canadian unity because the, the uh, <laughs> almost separatist premier of Alberta is singing the same sort of tune on Brenda Lucky as uh, as Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's cabinet. What, what Trudeau said today reminded me of when, you know, a team owner or GM talks about a coach just before the coach gets fired. You know, it's in any sport, football, whatever. And this, is, this stri strikes me as, I mean, she clearly... Uh, last week's headlines, uh, after all, she, she basically misled the cabinet. That was the allegation uh, from, the secure, from, uh, uh, from Jody Thomas. That is an extraordinary thing to come out uh, at this inquiry. I mean, I think that when there's, a, when there's books written about this, there's going to be whole chapters on the, on the different scripts. And so Peter Slowly isn't the only cop who should be blamed for, for, for the shortcomings of this, uh, of this uh, convoy protest uh, uh, police action. Uh, Brenda Lucky deserves some blame, too. Yeah, you focus on the positive. You're, I'm positive you all think she's going to be fired. <laughs> you know, it, it, but it, it, you know, we go five for five. Where yeah, <laughs> well, look, I have to stay out of it. But oh, you know, of I, course, I, yeah. I, well, I, I do think it, it's a very interesting dynamic. And just quickly, got about sixty seconds, Kathleen. I do think her silence on February 13th mm -hmm. at the cabinet meeting, at yeah, the IRG and then the cabinet meeting, and the way that her peers, I, I, I don't know if the National Security Advisor and the Commissioner of the RCMP are peers, but they are the heads of major institutions inside the public service at a time of great crisis, and they all, you know, Jody Thomas put bus-sized truck tires on, on Brenda Lucky's yeah. reputation <laughs> with that testimony. I'll make it really quick, three words, do your job. Mm -hmm. Do your job. Nobody like, resigns anymore, though. Nobody resigns. No, but do your job. Like, if, if you have something to say and you're in that cabinet where you're supposed to be giving unvarnished, you know, fulsome, you know, robust uh, advice, you know, she should have spoken up. And I, that's why I cited Jody Thomas as my favorite moment from this entire commission so far for saying you don't need an engraved invitation if you've got advice to give it to the cabinet. Give it to us. Do your job.